There's a lot of whiskey out there. Let's find something that's for you. There's tons of different types of whiskey. You have Scotch, Irish, Japanese, bourbon, rye, Canadian. That always seems to taste like maple syrup to me. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Anyway. So before we get into any specific whiskeys, it's a good idea to understand how whiskey is made. The first step is the mash. The mash is just the collection of grains used to make the whiskey. The second step is the malting floor. This floor is used to warm up the grains and actually expose all the sugars inside. So the third step is to get these grains to actually stop the malting process. They're gonna be put into a kiln and warmed up to dry them out. So those sugars remained present and exposed. Then they're boiled in hot water to extract those sugars. And finally, that liquid is distilled. And once you have the distilled substance, this is what's put into casks and barrels of all different types for all different lengths of time. So out of all these steps to the process, the two most important parts to actually selecting a whiskey are the mash and the aging process. Now there is some debate over things like the style of still may change the flavor of the whiskey. For example, Glen Morangi actually uses gin stills while Glen Fittich uses the traditional scotch stills. Personally, for beginner whiskey drinkers, I don't think that's gonna make much of a difference. So on to the mashes. Here's the deal with mashes. Mashes can be anywhere from making a whiskey incredibly sweet and smooth all the way to very harsh and spicy. So really it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for something sweet and smooth, either a 100% barley mash or a wheat mash. So the most common variety of whiskey that you find having a mash of 100% barley is scotch. It's actually a requirement of scotch. And a great example of great scotch, I have this bottle of Highland Park, and this is Dragon Legend, but really everything that Highland Park puts out is excellent. So the other smooth style of mash is gonna be your wheat mashes. The most common one, of course, is Maker's Mark. Now their base level isn't my favorite. It's certainly good for mixed drinks, but if you go a step above that, Maker's Mark actually puts out a very good cast strength as well as a very good variation called Maker's 46. Both are great options. Now, if you want to actually spend some time and get the rare and allocated bottles, you could go for Weller. Weller is an excellent bottle of whiskey, whether it's Weller 12, which I just held up, Weller Special Reserve, or Weller 107. Now let's move on to the spicier mashes. If you like a little kick, you like maybe spicy foods, these are definitely worth a try. First mash, corn. Now when I say corn mash, it's not like scotches where it has to be 100% corn. That would be a very harsh whiskey. <laughs> For a corn mash, it has to be at least 51%. And these are actually gonna be your bourbons. So a good example of bourbon that I have, Four Roses Single Barrel. I actually had my very first old fashioned made out of Four Roses Single Barrel, and it was excellent. Now, Four Roses Single Barrel, I picked this up at Costco for 34, 35 bucks when they have it. I always grab a bottle. It's a staple on my shelf. Four Roses also has a small batch that you can probably pick up at just your local grocery store for 20 bucks or so. But when it comes to corn mashes, you can actually push that percent of corn in the mash as high as 80, 90%. Once you hit 80%, it's actually no longer a bourbon, it's a corn whiskey. And probably the best example of a corn whiskey is mellow corn. Mmm, God, look at that bottle. I hope nobody was paid for that marketing design. Honestly, this is cheap. This is real cheap stuff. Keep this bottle in your fridge. Nobody wants to drink this at room temperature. Last but not least, my personal favorite, Rise. Rye mashes are sometimes difficult to work with. A lot of rye whiskeys you're going to find are prohibitively more expensive. So the thing about rye whiskeys is you can have a resulting whiskey that's actually very sweet, like you would find in a wheat or a bourbon. Uh, a great example of that is the Sazerac rye. This is from Buffalo Trace. You'll find it for about $30. Sometimes it's very difficult to find. I'm in Arizona and nearly impossible, but then all of a sudden I hop over the border to California, $29.99, straight on the shelf. But on the other end of the spectrum, a rye mash might be very harsh, very spicy, such as a personal favorite of mine, the Cast Strength Willet Rye Whiskey. 
So quick segue. Remember at the beginning of the video, I said that the only two important pieces were your mash and the aging process. I might have lied. Kind of like your third grade teacher when she told you Christopher Columbus was a good dude. Oops. The peating process actually takes place when the grains are dried right after malting. And what happens is on top of the fire, they put giant clumps of peat, which is essentially decaying plants and moss underneath the ground that they dig out and throw on the fire. It creates a smoke, a smoke that gets into the grains and all the way the distillation process into your final product. Now, when you find peated whiskeys, these very traditionally are going to be scotches, but actually there are some American whiskeys that do it as well. Take Del Bach, for instance. They use mesquite instead of peat in order to smoke their whiskeys, and it's one of the most unique whiskeys I've ever had. So last but not least, the actual aging process of the spirit. Once you take that spirit from the stills and put it into a cask, there is the type of cask, but it's also how long the spirit sits in the cask. Now, there are a lot of people out there that put a lot of weight on how long the whiskey is in the cask. And absolutely, the longer you put a whiskey in a cask, the smoother by and large it's going to be. But at the same time, I've found a ton of non-age statement whiskeys and a ton of younger whiskeys that are fantastic. The most well-known cask barrel to be used to age whiskey is of course your oak cask. It's actually a requirement for bourbon, but you also have American oak and Spanish oak. And again, for your beginning whiskey drinker, you're not gonna know the difference, but you will recognize the oak cask. The oak brings out a natural woodiness into the whiskey, but as well as it enhances the mash. So you have to really like the mash if that whiskey is just going into an oak cask. But the other type of casks and barrels that whiskey can be aged in is any sort of cask that previously held a different liquor. So for example, wine casks have been used to age whiskey of all different types. You have ex-bourbon casks being shipped over to Scotland so that Scotch whiskey can be put into. But then, of course, you have sherry, cognac, rum. And if you like any of these specific liquors, if you like the red wines coming out of California and you like that red plum flavor, if you like the taste of cognac and rum and sherry, these are excellent whiskeys to start off with. Some basic recommendations for all these types of casks. If you're looking for a straight oak cast aged whiskey, I'd go with Buffalo Trace. Any sort of bourbon is gonna fall into this category and it's a good place to start. If you're looking for a sherry cask, now for those wine lovers out there, High West Distillery out of Utah is actually doing a series of special releases where they age their double rye in a series of California wine casks. I've had the bottle of Zinfandel as well as Syrah, both fantastic. And finally, Cognac and Rum. Now these casks are gonna be a little harder to find in the whiskey. It's not as popular as sherry, straight oak, or wine, but you can find them in some Glenlivet varieties. Both very good. So that's really it. All you have to do is pick what style of mash you want and how it's aged. Then on top of that, you might get an opportunity to find a peated whiskey or an unpeated whiskey. My personal favorite right now is it's a mix of bourbon and rye whiskeys, and it's actually just aged in a traditional oak cask. Uh, it's from Redwood Empire, and it's pretty excellent. That's all I got for you today, folks. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe below. It really helps out the channel. And if you're afraid of drinking alone, Come have a drink with me. I stream over on Twitch every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. See ya.